Hello everyone and welcome to um, a new tutorial of Grasshopper. In this tutorial we're gonna teach you how to do some analysis, terrain analysis with Bison, uh, but also um, gonna teach you how to perform some, some of these analysis using um, terrain model imported using the DocuFossor uh, plugin. So let's start with the Bison one. So before starting, we need to import the terrain with Bison. We just import the mesh DM using this specific component, and then we need to rotate the orientation because, as I in mentioned in a previous tutorial and video, um, the Bison simply rotates or gives the wrong orientation of your DM. So you need to double check it with the true. Uh, north in the QGIS or RGIS. So now let's get started with this. So the first thing we want to do after importing is we have this mesh, correct? So then we can use uh, a custom preview to visualize the geometry. We can turn off the preview of this and then we have material that can be selected with a color Swatch. And then I got to use this color. Oh, my frame. So this color is fine. And that's it. So uh, once we have this material defined, we can now proceed. Um, so the first thing we need to do is add the flow visualization okay. so we need to connect to the mesh but with the last thing we're gonna do okay so the first we need to define a boundary we need to define a curve um, we can define using whole tile or we just can draw in the top view one of these polylines a curve so let me set this one curve okay you can internalize also the information not have the curve and delete the, the curve or we just can use it as it is okay i recommend you to start with a small one with a small boundary and then we can extend it to the whole dm so you don't risk them uh, processing the whole tile then what we do is just define a grid in this case i will want to start with number 10 Let's just start with number 10 for the grid, and then the number of steps can be 20. I'm going to explain what means this, and the length, it can be 2 perhaps. So how it works this is um, we have a series of contours. Let's imagine it like that. So from this point, we're going to calculate downhill what is the flow towards the other point, and so on. And we are gonna, in this way, identify what is the flow. So the grid is just this distance that exists between this and the other point. The step is the number of jumps that we're gonna calculate, and the length is the length of this this length here. Okay, so that's basically what it means. This. So once we have that, we just connect our geometry here. And we'll let it calculate it. So um, we can make this fainted. Okay. So here we have our first calculations. So I want to show you what happens when we increase or decrease some of these. So when we increase the grid, it's becoming coarser because the distance between the points on top of the grid it are much larger. If we decrease it, we will have shorter and much denser. Um, flows or lines. So now let's try not to move this to number zero. So 10 is good. The more we add it, the coarser it will become the visualization. Okay. And now we're going to check the number of steps. So let's increase them so that you will see longer lines. 
and when we decrease them we have shorter lines and in some cases this is just steps three so notice how we add steps as we move we added more and calculate the line so 20 or 25 steps perhaps are enough or up to 30 let's move it there okay and the length of those makes sense as well so increase the resolution as this smaller it is the distance so for this look it's too much perhaps for the visualization so everything will depend how close you are to the surface so let's get back to the original values we put 20 20 there or 18 perhaps okay so now let's try to extend this for the whole area so we just simply grab our curve and we extend it and you will see the whole area will be covered or we just simply draw a new one and we define and set this curve and it will take a little bit to calculate everything let's go to perspective so you can see the whole terrain you can see all the flows of the terrain now so this is our first calculation now what we can do is something similar what happened if we import it with a docophosor we modify with a docophosor the terrain so it's pretty much the similar approach so we got the ASC, we import, we have a file path, connect to the file path, we put a sample of two. Let me move this one here. Okay. Then we define X and Y. We can leave it like that. We just set one file. So I have some of them here. Um DM1. Yep, this is good. Um, no, sorry, ASC. Okay. So we just can turn off this preview. Okay. So now what we have here is we also turn off this preview. We just copy this. We will need it for the other visualization. Not copy. Okay. So what we got here is we need to shift the grid, and then we need to draw the grid mesh. Here it is. We just simply connect the geometry there. So we have the visualization, okay? We don't need to show any of this. So once we have this, so you can see, we have a quite good amount of resolution. So we need to filter this, okay? We need to filter this to reduce the resolution. And we use perhaps 10. Here to filter, maybe a bit. Okay, so once we filter, we can connect this to the to the mesh. You see these two cores. Perhaps um, four is enough, or three is enough. Okay, so this will speed up the process. Then we just grab the same calculation we have here, and we just copy them here. And instead of connecting this mesh, we're going to connect this mesh. Okay, so once we have done this, other option is just connect. Now, this is the, the best way, yeah. So once we have done this, we just can turn on this. So we will see that it's outside because this curve is outside the boundary, right? So what we can do is move this one there this should be updated 
It take a couple of seconds. But as you can see, quite similar calculation as previously done. Okay. So you can see the flows, the water will approximately will accumulate or where it will flow. Okay, and then you can also create curves here. Connect the curve and bake all these curves into one layer. We'll take a little bit a little bit. And we just can move all of this. somewhere else and we'll have here all the lines all of these is will be one poly one polyline so this is one option to visualize and we can group them um, so this is as you can notice many of the bison analysis can be done in a similar way. So this is only for docophosor. So this is the docophosor. We can group this. I'll put a name, I'll say uh, docophosor terrain. And then later we will show that we can from exactly the same analysis that we're doing here. Okay. So for this for now, we just don't need to display this, and we just can continue working with our mesh here, which is the mesh of Bison. Okay, so we, we have done the first. Now, another interesting one is just to work with Aspect. For Aspect, we need again the mesh. I will do it soon, and then we need the geometry, let's connect the geometry. Okay, the mesh. Now, connecting the mesh, we just need to define the angle of the visualization. So let me turn off this preview. Okay, so we have the aspect there. So because we haven't defined the angle yet. So let's do the definition of the angle. For the angle, we can use the angle, sorry, the knob, control knob, double click. We can set up the control knob. So the maximum will be 360. We reduce the decimals to zero. The range is 360. And the value, let's say, to 70. Okay, so we put OK and we just can control the angle with this. Calculating right now. So with this, we just can control the angle. So this is from the north, assuming this is north because let me rotate the view. So I'm rotating the view. So this is the north, the true north. So with this, you can see where is the sun coming. So we just need to be very careful and select the angle. Or well, we can just simply assign the angle directly here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we can generate a mesh with this. Okay, or we can set the angle directly here. Let, let me set the angle to 270 was a good. So what we're going to do is now just add the colors, the text and the aspect information. So now let me add a legend. We can add the legend and we put the colors and automatically we'll adjust. And we got the text from them. So you see what is 100 degrees, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. Um, so we have here we can group this and we will call this aspect. We can group, group this and we can put flow analysis. OK, 
Okay. Now, what we can do is other analysis, which is the rough of the shades, the slope is a good one as well. Um, so for the slope, again, we define minimum, maximum slope, mesh, followers, etc. So we just get the mesh. Okay, so now we have the mesh, the slope, sorry. Let me turn the angle so we can see. Um, again, here we just put this thing. So we can define the minimum slope that we want to display and the maximum. I will leave it right now as it is. And again, we need a legend. And then we just connect the colors and the text to that legend. So we know that is zero, red is relatively flat close to the blue it's 100% so it's very steep or vertical okay so this can give us an idea of the slope now it's very simple this analysis in fact um, so this is a slope now what we can do next one is view shed and watershed so let me try to do the watershed now because we can relate it a little bit with the flow analysis so we're going to turn off this, we're going to disable this view, and we're going to disable this view. And what we're going to do is just to do the watershed. So for that, we need to enable or this preview. Okay, so again, what we need is a point, and we need the mesh. It's simple. We grab here um, our mesh. And we faint it. And now we're gonna need is a point. Here we go. And uh, we need to set the point. So I want to put one, not only one, we can put several points. Um, let's imagine one here and one here in the middle. Okay. So we just right click and put multiple points and set up the points. That's it. So we have the watershed. It's calculating right now. So we go to the back to the perspective. We will see here. Um, this point, of course, is. It doesn't matter if it is below the ground, but it's because this is the point where we are calculating the watershed. Okay, we can move these points or project these points. That's a very good exercise to do. So we can do project point. Okay, and so we can put the points there. The direction is the set unit. And the geometry that we're using is our geometry from here. So now we'll see them, these points, projected into the specific places, the, the surface. Okay. So, and we can use these points here for the calculation. So we have watershed there, and let me. Make this hidden. Okay, so it's much easier here. So the watershed will calculate meshes. You can again put this into the mesh, and connect through those meshes and bake the meshes if you want. Or uh, you can get the product. So all of them you can calculate meshes and export or bake those meshes. So this is other one called um watershed. now i want to try something interesting which is we turn off this preview and we turn on this preview and once we have this so our watershed is not very evident so that's the problem 
as you can see, overlapping. So it's better just to turn this preview on. And so we can turn on these flows, which is the interesting thing to do. And again, we need to move this thing here. So now what you can see here are the flows of the water and at the same time the watershed. So you can see this point where it's all the catchment that will receive all this the water from all these areas. Okay. Because so you can use this for comparison. Now we have done the watershed. Now what I want to do is calculate view shed, which is another of the analysis we have here, view shed. And similar way, we just need to connect the mesh and the viewpoint. We can use a point. We can just copy this. and wait for this to calculate. So after calculating, it got a valid mesh. So maybe because the point is not correct or is not touching the surface. So what we're gonna do is, let's move this up. Let's set one point. And after doing that, let's just connect directly this point. So as now as you can see is the this point is, is the is highlighted in it would be good to do this like this. Oh gosh. So it is highlighted all the point the, the places or the locations from from which you can see or observe this point. So that is the logic behind this. So we, we selected this point. So the logic is happening if we move the point at this particular location. So that is what I want to do. I will disconnect this. That's the best to do. I'm going to turn on again this geometry. And I want to move this point to this particular location from the top. Well, I'm going to move it here. And from the front, I think I will bring it down. So when you see him in the, you see the, the point in the perspective, should be in this part of the ground. So it looks okay, I think. Now the problem is it's still under the surface, so right. It's a bit tricky. Okay, it seems like okay, but I think it's still below the surface. Now it's above the surface, so what we're going to do is set the point, oh sorry, just connect the point, and should be calculated the view shed for that point. It's take a, quite a while to calculate this. So we calculated all of them, let me of this preview so you can see here as you can see all the points there it's a good visualization so from all these locations you can observe or see this point from these points of course not so this is view shed okay we can group this and put a uh, View shed. So these are basically the most 
you know, important ones. Uh, we can also calculate cut and fill when we have all already um, explained the different type of um, mesh additions. And that's what we cover in the uh, following uh, tutorials. So that's all for today. Um, so thank you very much.